Hello! In this lecture, we'll define dark matter and dark energy, and then talk about what evidence astronomers have for the existence of dark matter, as well as some possibilities of what it could be made of. We need to first define what we mean by dark matter and dark energy. Even though they both have the word dark in their names, dark matter and dark energy are not related. Dark matter is an undetected form of mass that emits little or no light, but whose existence we infer from its gravitational influence. Dark energy is an unknown form of energy that seems to be the source of a repulsive force causing the expansion of the universe to accelerate. It's a little crazy to think about, but the matter we're used to, the stuff all around us, makes about 5% of all the matter in the universe. About 27% of the universe is in the form of dark matter, and about 68% is in the form of dark energy. There is currently ample scientific evidence to support the existence of dark matter. I'm going to describe the observations that provide this evidence and what these observations can tell us about the nature of dark matter. We'll see we have evidence for dark matter in our own Milky Way as well as in other spiral galaxies. Astronomers also have data from elliptical galaxies that is consistent with dark matter. On a larger scale, observations of galaxy clusters imply there are large amounts of dark matter within clusters. Kepler's law tells us that for any astronomical system that has its mass concentrated at its center, objects near the center should be moving faster than objects far away. We saw this in our own solar system. The inner planets move faster as well as in the accretion disks. We therefore expect that stars near the center of our galaxy should move faster than stars near the outer edges. But this is not what we observe. If we were to make a rotation curve of our galaxy, that is a plot of the velocity of the stars in our galaxy versus their distance from their center, we would expect to see something like this. Fast moving stars near the central bulge and slower ones farther out. But instead, this is what we see. The rotation curve is flat. Stars near the center are moving at the same velocity as stars on the edges. The flat rotation curve implies most of the galaxy's mass is not at the center. Where then is the mass? Well, it's in an enormous spherical halo of dark matter with 10 times the mass of all the stars in the disk. Our Milky Way is not unique when it comes to this distribution of dark matter. Astronomers also observe flat rotation curves in other spiral galaxies, implying that dark matter is common. We also see evidence for dark matter in elliptical galaxies. By studying absorption lines of elliptical galaxies, astronomers can determine how fast the stars in these galaxies are moving. It turns out that the speeds of stars remain fairly constant from the center of the elliptical galaxies to the edges, just as with the spirals. It appears ellipticals also have dark matter. There is observational evidence for dark matter on even larger scales. In the 1930s, astronomer Fritz Zwicky argued that galaxy clusters had enormous amounts of dark matter, but his idea wasn't taken seriously at the time. Zwicky measured the motions of galaxies within the clusters. Using Newton's law of universal gravitation, he used the velocities of the galaxies to estimate the cluster's total mass. The total mass you expect is the mass from all the stars in the galaxies. One can estimate this mass by looking at the luminosities of the galaxies. If the galaxy has a luminosity of 100 billion suns, it's reasonable to say that that galaxy has a mass of 100 billion solar masses. What Zwicky found was that the mass obtained using the motions of stars was much larger than the mass of the luminous matter in the galaxy. The mass we find from galaxy motions in a cluster is about 50 times larger than the mass in stars. 
hot gas within galaxy clusters offers more evidence for the existence of dark matter. Within galaxies in a cluster, there is often hot X-ray emitting gas. There can be a lot of it, up to seven times as much mass in the form of gas compared to stars. We can measure the temperature of the gas, and since temperature is related to the movement of the gas particles, we can calculate the velocity of the particles. From the velocities, we can calculate the total mass of a cluster. The results obtained from hot gas agrees with the results found by setting orbital motions. Dark matter in clusters of galaxies is up to 50 times the combined mass of the stars in the cluster's galaxies. The effect of gravitational lensing also provides evidence for dark matter. Gravitational lensing occurs because massive objects can actually bend light. Einstein predicted this in his general theory of relativity. Here's how it works. Imagine a large galaxy cluster. We're observing the cluster from Earth. Behind the cluster is a large spiral galaxy. The light from the spiral galaxy passes through the cluster on its way to Earth, but the light bends due to the mass of the cluster. We see ghost images of the galaxy in the directions from which the light appears to be coming. This is a Hubble Space Telescope image of a galaxy cluster acting as a gravitational lens. The yellow elliptical galaxies are cluster members. The small blue ovals are multiple images of a single galaxy that lies almost directly behind the cluster's center. The thing is, if you estimate the amount of mass in the cluster based on the luminous stars, there is not nearly enough to cause this sort of lensing. When astronomers calculate the mass using gravitational lensing, it agrees with the masses obtained from the orbital motions of the galaxies and the velocities of hot gas particles. Gravitational lensing supports dark matter. It seems there is ample observational evidence for dark matter, both in individual galaxies and in galaxy clusters. But perhaps there's another solution. What if our understanding of gravity is wrong? Does dark matter really exist? We therefore have two options. Either dark matter really exists and we are observing the effects of its gravitational attraction, or something is wrong with our understanding of gravity, causing us to mistakenly infer the existence of dark matter. Physicists are seriously looking into the latter. It's called MOND, Modified Newtonian Dynamics. Nevertheless, gravity has been so well tested that most astronomers prefer option one. If we agree dark matter exists, then what is it made of? There are two basic possibilities. Dark matter could be ordinary matter, the matter we're used to, only we can't see it. A possibility astronomers thought of early on was celestial objects like brown dwarfs, white dwarfs, and black holes. We may not be able to see these objects, but they certainly have mass. Astronomers call these objects machos, which stands for Massive Compact Halo Objects. The second option is that dark matter is some sort of exotic matter. Astronomers often call this possibility for dark matter WIMPs, which stands for Weakly Interacting Massive Particles. The name implies the particles have mass, but we're talking about very small subatomic particles. Astronomers believe WIMPs are the best bet for a variety of reasons. Why are WIMPs the leading hypothesis? First, there simply does not appear to be enough ordinary matter. The amount of deuterium, heavy hydrogen, left over from the Big Bang, as well as observations in the cosmic microwave background, indicate that ordinary matter adds up to only about one-seventh of the total amount of matter. The rest of the matter is thought to be exotic dark matter, or WIMPs. Second, dark matter as WIMPs would also explain why dark matter seems to be distributed throughout spiral galaxy halos rather than concentrated in the disk. 
We learned earlier that galaxies are thought to form as gravity pulls together matter in regions of slightly enhanced density. This matter would have consisted mostly of dark matter mixed with some ordinary hydrogen and helium gas. The ordinary gas could collapse to form a rotating disk because individual gas particles could lose orbital energy. But WIMPs cannot produce photons and rarely interact and exchange energy with other particles. As the regular gas collapsed to form a disk, WIMPs would therefore have remained stuck in the orbits far out in the galactic halo, just where most dark matter seems to be located. The case for the existence of WIMPs is fairly strong, but not a sure thing. Detecting the particles directly is an enormous challenge. Astronomers are working on this in two different ways. The first and most direct way is with detectors that can potentially capture WIMPs from space. Because these particles are thought to interact only very weakly, the search requires building large, sensitive detectors deep underground where they are shielded from other particles from space. So far, work in this area has provided some potential signals for dark matter, but no definitive proof. The second way scientists are currently searching for dark matter particles is with high energy particle accelerators. Particle collisions in accelerators produce a variety of subatomic particles. None of the particles found so far has the characteristics of a WIMP, but scientists are optimistic that the Large Hadron Collider will soon reach collision energies great enough to produce dark matter particles. I'll leave you with this 2011 quote from a scientist searching for dark matter. If I were to make a bet, I would put my money on the first unambiguous evidence for particle dark matter appearing within the next few years. Once those detections start taking place, we will begin to shed light on dark matter's properties in detail. If 2011 is an embarrassing time to be a cosmologist, it's an exciting one too. Take care. I'll talk to you soon.